वेलकम टू दिफ्टींथ वीडियो ऑफ दिस वीडियो सीरीज ऑन सर्वाइविंग आई एम अहमदाबाद एंड द थर्ड वन विच एसेंशली डील्स विद प्लेसमेंट सो वाइल द टाइटल टॉक्स अबाउट केस इंटरव्यूज एंड लिविंग अ मार्क विद ए पर्सनैलिटी इट the video essentially talks about the some of the common things we can keep in mind while answering the personality based questions so i've mentioned about case interviews here moving beyond that but i think this is actually relevant for a person preparing for any sector whatsoever whether they're preparing for marketing whether they're preparing for project management or any other interview because these are largely interview fundamentals that you can keep in mind the list is not exhaustive but is essentially made out of the inputs uh from some of the more common questions that i feel people have uh regarding how to go about answering these questions so as always if you've not had a chance to go over then just go over these four slides or look at the first video so you have a better understanding of what's my context and where i am coming from while presenting these things and uh, essentially jumping right to the matter which is about beyond case solving and leaving a mark with your personality so five points largely and in many ways are interconnected uh, actually before that also my suggestion to you strongly would be uh, especially if you are going from a consulting perspective to two things one just google what the common questions are and you will find almost on all the sources that you look at you will find some 8 to 10 common courses which uh, common questions which are overlapping so maybe just by looking at three four five sources you can come up with a list of 15 questions that are asked more often than the others just have those questions with you work with that list second and this one is uh not that uh i would not say it's not that relevant perhaps is uh, i mean google can be enough but if you have the second aspect also that's great which is that if you have access to seniors mentors who have gone through the process you can ask them a little more if they were asked any questions outside of those 15 and uh, again um, like i mentioned with the overall preparation perspective uh, i would differ from some of my friends and uh, peers who say that it's this preparation is best done when you're on campus and this could eclipse the academic preparation i disagree i think especially more than anything else this is best done early as early as possible because uh, if you remember in some of the early videos and if you've seen those i keep talking about getting to know yourself better before you start a b school journey and that can be slightly unstructured so a very structured way of getting to know yourself and this flows from those early videos is to look at these 15 questions and maybe more questions if you are very keen and answer those questions as honestly as possible for yourself so it links with the overall b school experience also and that's why i believe this should happen very quickly now five points first is your energy and basically are your overall emotions in coherence with the words that you are saying now let's take two examples let's say i say i absolutely love case solving and the alternative would be i love case solving in the first my body language my overall level of energy is in coherence with the words that i am using in the second one not so much aspire for the first one i think this is a common message but what we typically miss out on is sometimes we prepare our answers a little too much and then we become slightly mechanistic and then our energy and the words are not in coherence anymore because if i'm repeating let's say a memorized paragraph 20 times then it's hard to build that energy over and over again that's why i never remember my answer and i would request you not to rote learn your answer it's absolutely useful to know the points you're trying to make so you might make a mental note that hey for if i'm asked one of those 15 questions these are the roughly 3 4 five things i want to keep in mind what happens with rote learning also while giving an answer you go like if you get stuck you start thinking oh, what was next what was next and that even if you're not speaking out loud that kind of shows on your face that you're trying to recall 
and if you, you can't really you don't want to give an impression that you're trying to recall about your life so much as if you have memorized things so it has to be more organic that's why just look at the five whatever number of points you want to focus on but don't memorize them so what will happen is that in your interview you will use let's say words that you've not used 20 times before and then it's easier to have emotion and word coherence but i think you might if you're not a very expressive person try practicing it why is it useful because when you have that level of energy and emotion connect it seems more authentic a robot does not seem that authentic uh, an associated point i would like to mention here is about honesty i remember seeing some posts a couple of posts actually over the last 2 3 months on linkedin where people have shared their experience that you know don't be very honest in an interview it's about selling yourself i would humbly disagree with those people i think honesty brings in that level of confidence and energy and helps build that repo in a much quicker fashion what i would request you to is be careful with your honesty let's say that uh, you have four different weaknesses and let's say someone asks you three weaknesses and one of your top weaknesses is that you have anger issues i will not i will not ideally recommend you to mention that maybe use the other three which are more professional in that sense and uh, no one will i ever suggest you that you know create or come up with a new weakness altogether that's just i don't think i don't think i relate to that completely because to a great extent the questions these 15 questions are not just designed for the interviewer only to judge them and that's my perspective that by all of this honesty and coherence is important because the interviewers are also trying to judge whether you know yourself or not only a person who knows themselves very well will be taking challenges that are suited for them if let's say i lie through my interview and somehow i'm able to convince the interviewer that hey i have these 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 strengths and these weaknesses which i actually don't have on the job i will land up in situations where my fake strengths will not help and my fake weaknesses will be nowhere to be found it's the real weaknesses which will hamper things so they also want to check whether you know yourself or not that's my perspective so please remember this and uh, practice your energy levels if you're not used to i understand some people are not that you comfortable with it and if i again link back to some of my earlier points on academics here speaking in class is a great way to get more comfortable with speaking with more emotion with more clarity the next point is about connecting with listeners and understand their confident their interest and you can also highlight confidence in i'll give you one tactical example here which is uh, sometimes when i'm asked can you tell me something about yourself i answer and if the interviewer has not already introduced themselves then i ask them can you also please let me know a little bit about yourself and i have found that to completely change the energy of the equation because no longer was i someone who was way below in terms of the power hierarchy here i knew that this is a professional relationship and i can and i should ask the question about who i am interacting with without that how do i even set up a rapo so my intent to set up a rapo came out very clearly and more so the fact that i am a confident person that even with this whatever power gap that existed i was able to talk to them from a consulting perspective that is so crucial because your clients will have that gap in age in experience and you still need to have a conversation a fluent conversation with them that's just one example of how you can connect with a listener but in general it's a great idea to show interest in their lives whether it's a buddy whether it's your dinner and whether it's an interview and beyond this very transactional thing which is an interview in many ways in general if you're meeting anyone on campus any person just be more interested in their life and you will find it how much more likable and how much more uh, interesting a conversation becomes so that's all about point number 1 second is about are your narrators consistent and crisp so two points crisp and they both actually relate with the point that does the interviewer at the end of the interview have a clear understanding of who you are in the interview if after you leave the interview room the interview is like uh, 
I don't know if I understand this person perfectly. The chances of your converting that interview are probably slightly lower, and you won't run that risk if your answers are consistent. Which means, let's say, if you're mentioning that something is your strength in your first answer, then that should come out later on in perhaps a fourth or fifth or sixth answer also. If you are trying to project yourself as an extrovert and you let's say you are an extrovert, then that should come out in overall all the inner all the answers that you have. Not perhaps it's not directly then somewhere in an indirect manner. At least not the answer. Some of the answers which directly require extroversion. There you should not use introversion as your fallback option. So that's the point about consistency. So that the interviewer can clearly see that you're authentic and can remember those things about you. Crispness helps because a lot of your interviews are senior people. Might not be that patient. I'm using a very careful. Might not be that patient. If your points are very crisp and very clearly numbered, so three things: one, two, three. Versus, I'm going to tell a few things to you. So, some of these small tactical things can make you appear crisp when you number your points. When your points are use less words for it and clearly, not my strongest suit at times. If you've watched these videos, you will realize that. But I would advise you to try and aspire for it to the extent possible. So, two aspects here, and uh, one. Again, a tactical example. Let's say, tell me something about yourself. You can go on and on and on and on about your life, but like that's an answer you could probably limit to sixty to seventy-five seconds, and only talk about like top three, two, three points. And the at the expense now, the risk or crispness is that people feel that oh, I might lose out on some interesting points. No, that's not necessarily true. You can explain something in few points, and you can end it on a very intriguing note. That the interviewer actually ends up asking you more questions about that. Uh, so just keep. I, I, it's difficult for me to cover all of those things here, but just keep this point in mind and see if you can use this thing in your answers. In general, as a conversationalist, you will become better, and uh, don't keep people too much on the uh, edge of the seat. Also, that gets a little irritating. So find the balance. Third thing. Is there predictability in your articulation? So I've already mentioned this point, which flows from crispness, that numbering your points. Let's say someone has asked me, uh, okay, let's say what are your strengths? Just, just that. So you could say, okay, fine. So you just start by saying, ah, blah, 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 or you could say, okay, so fine. I just want to talk about my top two strengths or top three strengths. Or let's say someone gives you a situation, you say, what are your recommendations? It's not saying firstly I'll do this, secondly I'll do this, thirdly I'll do this, then this, then this. What happens is when you don't number your points upfront, when you're not predictable upfront, the individual who's listening does not know how much cognitive load to assign to each of the point that they are listening. Whereas, let's say if you tell me you just have to that I'm going to tell you three things here, then I know that a significant portion of my attention has to go to each point. When you don't tell me that, I don't know whether I'm going to say three things or thirty things, and the first point or second one I might hear with much diluted attention. So number your points. Useful conversation tip in general, and always lead with the strongest point along with examples. So if you can bring in relevant examples which support the qualitative point you're mentioning, it's easy to say, "Oh, I'm very hardworking," but is there a very short example? That you can do, and mention here proactively. That would help. Do not ramble, which goes be back to which uh, makes me go back to the point about Christmas. Then is structuring your points. Sometimes you are asked a lot of situational questions. So what I've done is I pick three, and I've just given what I, how I would structure them. So let's say if there's a question about failure, context, effort, result, by analysis of the effort result mismatch. Which is essentially the failure and the learning that came out of it. Ending with a learning, very important. Challenge. Let's say describe a challenge. Context. Your idea, implementation plan. What are the challenges that you experienced? Result. Can again go to learning. Sometimes when you have to convince others, context. Your point. Others' objections. How did you empathize with others? If you empathize with others. How did you build the exercise of? How did you build the consensus? What was the exercise all about? What was the result? What was the learning? So you see how I'm always mentioning the context. This goes back to my point about series also. When I said context, action, result. 
if you see all of this is just an extension of that i'm just extending the chain a little bit more in each of these things and mentioning the learning towards the end is useful so while you're telling your points while you're trying to break your answers and form stories for those answers make sure you have some structure to it a it's easy for you to remember so you don't have to memorize the answer you know there's a logical structure to it so just knowing the points is enough b when you have a structure it's very easy for the other person to follow what you're saying so that's it obviously you don't have to say oh the context was this my what my effort was this not use these tags but the story has to flow in this manner very useful the fourth point is are you a one trick pony have at least two examples or stories for whatever you share i cannot say that hard work is my strength and just have like one story for that or one narrative really my strengths weaknesses all of those things are which flow from a lifelong learning journey so whatever is the question like have at least two stories and this you know will go back to the point of why i was saying starting early because this is some effort right try to link certainly with a job requirement and let your strengths come out now you might have many stories to talk about for a particular situation how do you decide which story to tell versus which story not to tell my simple suggestion would be let's say talk about consulting one of the key things which is when the job requirements to work with others so it's a good idea to have a story which brings about your strength of working with others with a with a very individualistic story and again i'm broadly generalizing the individualistic story might have certain other things which make it more relevant but just say everything else is the same working with others is a more relevant story to talk about so just think to what are the job requirements of the job i'm applying for and then what are the stories which make more sense or more relevant always try to pick professional examples over personal if they are consistent with the narrative if you cannot think of a very good professional example or something absolutely bring in the personal element ideally efforts and results should both emerge as you can see from the points that i mentioned here and uh, impactful stories matter more than in less impactful story then always think of this from the listener's perspective you might think sometimes when we spend more time on something it seems like a great struggle for us but if the impact at the end of it is limited then it might not come out as well as you wanted to so just try to balance those things and to the extent possible recent narratives which link more with and why recent narratives is because they are a closer reflection of who you are today you can bring in a story which is 10 years ago but you are probably a different person from that point of time so recent narratives help unless there's something like huge which happened which you want to bring up so there are four large points fifth is just the process of it all and the assumption is that you start early and you collect some of these basic questions and then you start reflecting on your life this requires time and more important it requires certain amount of freeness of the mind being not very stressed things which are a luxury in your first couple of months that's why i want you to start early once you reflect wait and just try to structure things in your head and then write those points down somewhere so the good thing of waiting here is that once i started with the initial reflection there were certain uh gaps in my stories which started coming up that oh when i say something it's not very consistent with some of the other things i'm trying to say is there something i'm missing out on and the weight kind of brought more and more narratives more and more memories which were not very recent perhaps which were small small things but they were the connectors to my life story so waiting is important because those connectors are harder to guess when you're sitting on a table they will come in randomly then write the key points down and then start reflecting more so that you bring in more coherence to the entire narrative and then you're essentially sorted the reflection process also here is to think of if you need more stories but in the end the coherence and the impact are what you're looking for so i hope these points are useful for you to 
bring out the best version of yourself these are not exhaustive but i think these cover a lot of important points when it comes about the personal experience or the hr or whatever interview you want to call it irrespective of whether you are applying for consulting or any other kind of role so i hope it helps do not forget to check out the case videos on this channel uh, which will help you prepare better for a case interview if you are looking for that keep revisiting these ideas especially closer to the critical junctures of your journey share this with someone who you think might benefit from this this video and the others and leave a comment if this has helped you in any way so well take care best of luck and stay curious